Hey, if you are a new sports fan, congratulations. I'm really excited for you and the doors that it's gonna open. And I wanna give you this reminder. There is no shame in the game for why you are a sports fan. You could be a sports fan for lots of different reasons. Maybe it's to connect with a client at work, or maybe it's the topic your kids will talk about at dinner. Perhaps you just like the way athletes look in their uniforms. Look, it's your fandom, your reasons. But not everybody is going to see things the same way I do. Now, I have been a sports broadcaster for 20 years, so I have been inside locker rooms talking to athletes, coaches, and fans for a long time. And I know that sports can bring people together, and it is a great talking point. But I know that you're going to run into some sports bullies out there who think that there's only one way to be a great fan. Well, that's wrong, but you need a few tools to handle that if it happens to you. Number one, know this, that you don't have to offer an excuse or an explanation or any other reason for being a sports fan. Stick to your guns. There is no right or wrong way to be a fan, although I would argue the person who's using it to bully others is probably doing it wrong. Number two, get comfortable talking about what you know. I call this defining your area of expertise, and it helps to add some context around your fandom in a conversation. So for example, if you follow the local college football team and not college football as a whole, like the entire landscape, great, then say that in the conversation. If you just became a Seattle Seahawks fan this year and you have no idea what happened last year or five years ago, then say that. If the only sports you watch are the ones your kids play, perfect. Then express that in the conversation. Remember, there's no shame in the game, but when you add just a little bit of context, you convey to other people what it is that you are able and willing to talk about, and you set yourself up to succeed. Because sports doesn't have to always be about the biggest headlines or the most popular sports or the biggest team in town. You can use sports to segue into lots of other things. And that is point number three. Know where you want to take the conversation and have a plan for getting it there. So you could be talking about a new restaurant you want to visit down by the ballpark or an upcoming trip or an upcoming project. If sports isn't truly the thing you want to spend a lot of time on, no problem. Use it to get into the conversation and then be able to make that segue and that transition. Remember, there's no shame in the game. This is going to be a huge tool for you. If you'd like a few other confidence boosting tips, go to the website, talksportytome.com. There are resources on the offers page. There's lots of blog posts. You can buy one of the books I've written on it, or you can sign up to get weekly conversation starters delivered right to your inbox by 7 a.m. every Monday. I am here to make this as easy as possible for you because talking sports opens doors. I can't wait to see what it opens for you.